Hi! Welcome to Surviving Schizophrenia with Steven. My name is Steven. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, I'm here with my dad. I'm Steve, Steven's dad. And we'll be discussing how I awoke from my schizophrenia. So what is awakening from schizophrenia? For me at least, when I awoke from my schizophrenia, that's when my psychosis lifted. That's when I came back to reality and gained insight on what actually had happened to me with my schizophrenia. And that occurred over the course of time, but the date that we can pinpoint the awakening was January of 2014. Stephen fell ill in approximately February, March 2012, was hospitalized in May of 2012. And we titrated to clozapine in June of 2013, so almost a year and a half into the illness, because Abilify wasn't working, Zyprexa wasn't working, and we also tried Latuda. And those three antipsychotics, those are second generation antipsychotics, they weren't uh, pulling Stephen out of the psychosis completely. There was still a detachment from reality. And it was in May, on May 9th, 2013, Stephen was on a 22.5 milligrams a day of Abilify. And then I have here on May 17th, 2013, a week and a half later, we decreased it to 15 milligrams of Abilify a day because he was feeling worse that past week. During this time, 2013, Stephen was seeing his psychiatrist approximately three times a month, so every 10 days. And uh, she was keeping, his psychiatrist was keeping very close tabs on how the medication was working and whether it was, wasn't working and was titrating kind of up and down um, depending upon how, how I felt, how you felt and, and how what I reacted symptoms. to it. It, it. Correct. Exactly. The symptoms. And we were trying to, you know, pull Stephen completely out of the psychosis. It, it, had, it had lifted, you know, over the course of that past year, somewhat it wasn't as seriously out of touch with reality as he was initially, but it had not lifted completely. And that's why we had, uh, decided to go to clozapine that, uh, so we, Started clozapine on June 20th, 2013 at 12.5 milligrams a day. There was an initial thought that we would titrate onto clozapine in the hospital. We were a little concerned as Stephen's parents doing this at, at home because of all the potential um, side effects. Yeah. Um, the vast majority of which Stephen didn't have. No, no, no seizures, no, no... No loss of my white blood cells. Right, no de decrease in the white blood cells. So we started... Clozapine, 12.5 milligrams a day on June 20th. And by July, we had titrated up to 50 milligrams. Uh, and then August, 75 to 87.5 milligrams a day. And then October 1st, he had a when, during one of his blood draws, we checked for the clozapine level in the blood. Because when you're on clozapine, you're trying to achieve a possible target of 350 whatever, uh, clozapine level in the blood. On October 1st, his clozapine level was 76. And he was on 87.5 milligrams a day of clozaril. That's the brand, but it was clozapine. We continued with that and titrated up to 175 milligrams a day in January of 2014. And his psychiatrist, in, in reviewing the notes, uh, my notes of that time period, that's when his psychiatrist said he is clearly an awakener. And it was quite amazing what, you know, clozapine had done uh, because it brought Stephen back where, you know, a therapeutic dose of Abilify didn't and where a therapeutic dose of Zyprexa didn't. It was quite amazing. And that's uh, clearly an awakener in early January 2014. And then by February 2014, uh, we had achieved a clozapine level in the blood of 412. So again, you're trying to reach a therapeutic level, according to research, is greater than 350. And the clozapine plus norclozapine level was 634. And on in that metric, you're trying to reach a greater than uh, 450 for a therapeutic uh, dose. So we continued and... 
In uh, July of uh, July 15th of 2014, clozapine level was 493. So we're we're definitely in the you know in the uh, we're seeing improvement. And we're, we're in the, the right range. Exactly, we're in the right range in the ther therapeutic range for clozapine. And we titrated up to 200 milligrams a day in August of 2014, and then eventually over the course of the next year, titrated back down to 175, which is what he's currently on. Yeah. And that seems to have been the ma you know the magic, the magic and the right dose for sure. For sure. Do you remember Stephen? Um, you know when, when you know the, the, when you came back into reality. No, no, I do not remember when I came back. I don't think I would notice. Right. Personally. So, so you know the awakening occurred by January of 2014. And Stephen, at that point, had serious negative symptoms of the illness, uh, serious anxiety and depression. Um, but the, the flatness of the effect was easing, and he was clearly, according to the psychiatrist, and what we saw as well, in reality, completely. 100% back in reality. And when, when someone awakens from schizophrenia, and it was a miracle, in our lives. This is a happy video. I mean, this is incredible. Oh, this is a very good thing. It's a, oh gosh, you know, because yeah. uh, that was a concern that, that it would never occur. Right. When you, when a person awakes from schizophrenia after a prolonged uh, period of psychosis, right, the, there's two things psychologically that that person has to, you know, recover from emotionally. And one is you know their their own you know physical and mental limitations at that point because they're not the same person they were no. before they fell ill they've got severe anxiety depression you know they have trouble reading hadn't read in a while some PTSD from everything I went through and everything that was going through my mind at the time right exactly and then you also have you know the world has changed yes. because before the illness. Stephen was in sixth grade, St. John Fisher School, um, doing great, had been there since first grade. Uh, kindergarten, actually. Kindergarten, actually. A lot of friends, uh, was involved in swimming and all kinds of other activities, guitar. And uh, now the world has changed. Those, those, those kids had moved on, yeah. right? They were in eighth grade, graduating from eighth grade. Yeah. And Stephen now is just coming out of this, you know, prolonged period of psychosis. In much worse physical shape. I was out of shape, definitely. Right. Uh, I was always tired. Granted, I still am, but... So, you you know, there's... And this, you know, and his psychiatrist told us that, you know, what Stephen is going to have to deal with now is this, this grief of this loss. And actually, his current therapist is phenomenal. Yeah, she is. She, uh, she's a grief counselor. And so... Part of, you know, you know, a large part, I think, of um, recovering is coming to terms with... Everything the, you've lost. Everything you've lost, right? The yeah. loss and the change in the world. Yes. And, you know, one of the changes in Stephen's world at that point, as he came out of the psychosis, was that, well, he wasn't graduating from eighth grade, and he was not at the same school. We had... He enrolled him in the public school to get access to the individual education uh, program, IEP process, and the, the resources of the public school system that are in place for, for you know, special needs uh, children and students. And so all of a sudden, Stephen is going to another school. And the devastation I know when we would take you up to the, to the other school, I mean, was, you know, we were personally devastated too. I and mean, here's... Here's, here's our Stephen, and it, life had been destroyed, essentially. Yeah. I do remember I just cry a lot when I get there. Right, so this took I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't ahead. handle it. I couldn't yeah. take it. And that's because I knew at, the time, at that point I had schizophrenia, and I knew I had lost all this, and I knew my life had changed. Right, so, so I just cried. I, I couldn't handle it. Yeah, and I, I'm sure I wept, too. Had a lot of um, time um, where it was, uh, you know, difficult. But I knew that, you know, we, we had to go on. You know, we had to go on to support Stephen 
You know, I kept thinking to myself, you know, I don't have this illness. I'm here to support Stephen, who does have this illness. So, you know, that is my job. <laughs> you know, that's my responsibility as his, as his father, um, and just as a, as a, as a you know, human being. So, yeah, but there was the, um, you know, that, so the, these negative symptoms, so we got the awakening, you know, the, fell ill in early 2012, the awakening is January 2014, back in reality, massive negative symptoms of the illness though, anxiety, depression still. And uh, you know, so we're um, you know, still working through that. For sure. So, uh, but it's uh, phenomenal. It's a good thing. It's, it's we might not look very happy right now, but <laughs> right. it is a good thing. It's yeah. a very good thing. It's just, it's so hard to deal with, even though I have awoken, awoken and that's amazing. It's still, it's still a struggle. Right, and I, I think one of the uh, first videos on it, Dad's Perspective, on psychosis that we did, uh, or not on psychosis, just dad's perspective on uh, schizophrenia. Um, I said that, you know, when Stephen wanted to start the YouTube channel um, nine months or a year ago and, you know, just recently started it after talking about it for some time, you know, I told Stephen, we're going to, we're going to laugh, but we're going to cry. And it's we, true. we have laughed and we have cried. Yeah. And because, uh, you know, really in the last five years, we've just tried to live our life. Uh, as best we can with our life how it is now. Correct. Exactly. Not the same, but right. And and I think good. we, yeah, and I think we've done phenomenally well. Yes. We yes, try to have. live our life, go on, but you know, also with the YouTube channel now, we're 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 digging, you know, bringing out the we're boxes. We're bringing it all back. We're bringing it all back, and there's been yeah. a lot of uh, uh, a lot of joy and a lot yes. of sadness as well. So yeah, we're gonna laugh and we're gonna cry, but that's life, right? That's living life, and that's sure. how you move. You move past, I think, yeah. um, a lot of the, the struggles. Definitely. So, um, and again, this channel, you know, I think I'm amazed. I'm just uh, amazed, Stephen, that you want to break down the stigma. I do. I really do. That's one of the things that, actually, one of the things that I was crying about then, aside from all the loss and the grief, was the stigma. Because I know if I told people, I would be essentially shunned at the time. Right. I would be alienated from everyone. Right. So course. I didn't until much, much more recently. Right. And of course, when Literally Stephen... like five months ago now. Right. And you know, when Stephen fell, you know, when diagnosed with schizophrenia, you know, we as parents, you can't st start telling people that your son has schizophrenia. They, they, those people just go away. I mean, and no fault of their own. No. Um, but It's just there's a stigma there. People are afraid of it. Right. And I'm hopeful that I can make a change there. So people won't be. You will. You will. Thanks. Yeah. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope you have a happy and healthy rest of your day. And hope to see you in the next video. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.